This Let's Edit with Media Composer first tutorial is brought to you by Video Guys, the leading reseller of video editing and production and post-production equipment for over 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, motion tracking, rotoscoping, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hello, and welcome to this tutorial series on learning Avid Media Composer first. My name is Kevin P. McAuliffe, and the goal of this tutorial series is very simple. To get you up and running with Media Composer first as quickly as possible so that you can then take the next step into learning the full version of Avid Media Composer. Now, the first thing that I want to point out is that you will notice that I am doing these tutorials on a Mac. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're working on Mac or Windows, I'll be calling out the shortcut for both platforms, so keep that in mind. Now, something else that I do want to mention is that for these tutorials, the goal is to bring them in at around 10 to 15 minutes long. I don't want to do them any longer than that because, to be honest, anything longer people tend to lose interest and get bored and they end up shutting them off. My goal is to get you the information in as little time as possible so you can get up and running as quickly as you can. All right, now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get you up and running in Media Composer first, but what do you do when you're ready to take the plunge into the full version of Media Composer? You're gonna to wanna to make the transition from one application to another as smoothly as possible. If this is the situation you're in right now, why don't you head on over and check out my Mac Pro training series on the full version of Media Composer where Lesson 1 will get you up and running in about an hour. All right, now that we've gotten that out of the way, the first place that we're going is to the Application Manager. Now, for all you editors on a Mac, you'll find the Application Manager icon located in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. For all my Windows friends, you'll actually find it down on the bottom toolbar in the lower right hand corner and in most cases it's tucked away in that little sub menu that you can click on and you'll see the application manager in there. The icon is exactly the same whether you are on Mac or Windows. Now I'm going to open the application manager and as you'll see inside the application manager it actually sees three system IDs for me. Now the application manager is tied directly to my avid.com account. Now, that's something that's important for you to wrap your head around, and it's something that's important that you need to know. Because the application manager is tied directly to your avid.com account, the application manager needs to load fully before you can launch Media Composer first. If it hasn't launched fully, you're going to get a screen that looks something like this. It's going to tell you that login is required for Media Composer first. So if for some reason it's not loading, you're gonna to wanna to head on into the application manager and check it out. Now, you know where did this system ID come from? How did this actually get put into your avid.com account? Well, when you're ready to take the plunge and start working in Media Composer first, you will sign up for an avid.com account and when downloading the software, you will be assigned a unique system ID. Now, if you head on over to the avid.com website, you'll see inside of my products, there is my license for Media Composer first. This is what the application manager is referencing when it loads up and it starts looking for your system ID. Now, a couple other things that I do want to point out in here as well is that when you decide to take the plunge and start working with Media Composer first, you'll notice that you get 50 free tracks of music from Sound Ideas and you also get tutorial content from inside the edit. So this is all free to you, so why not take advantage of it? Okay. Now, that's pretty much all I want to talk about as far as the application manager goes. You can get in and check things out in here. You'll notice that if you keep coming down, there's an apps tab that you can get in and see what you have installed, a plugins tab. To be honest, in most cases, you're going to come down to the preferences tab because this is where you can get in and add install options like to auto install or auto update. You can even get in and clear cache files and even restart the app manager help from here. Now, to be honest, in most cases, you probably won't need to come into the application manager except to check to see if it's actually loaded up so that you can then launch Media Composer first. Okay, now you might think that we're going to get into Media Composer first, but not quite yet. I do want to talk about something else that's important, and that is organization outside of the application. Now, in this case, you'll see that I'm working with an external hard drive that I've called appropriately enough Media 1. That's insinuating that I might actually get Media 2, Media 3, Media 4. 
And this is normally how I like to set things up. Now, I've been a Media Composer editor for a long time, almost probably about 18 or 19 years now. And I'm telling you this from years of experience because it's never steered me wrong. I'm just going to close the application manager. I'm not going to quit out of it. I'm just going to close it. And I'm going to head to Media One. Now, inside of my external media drive, I'm going to need to set up one folder and Media Composer first is going to set up the other folder for me. Now, you'll notice that I've actually already created the folder called, appropriately enough, Media Composer First Projects. Now, why did I call it that? Because I already have a folder on my drive called Avid Projects that I use for my full Media Composer projects. Now, something else that's exceptionally important for me to point out is that if you are a Media Composer editor and you're going to install Media Composer First, the two applications cannot coexist on the same system you will need to make sure that only either Media Composer first or Media Composer is on the system, again, because they cannot coexist together on the one OS. Okay. Now, you'll notice that inside of my Media Composer first projects folder that I have a folder called Kevin P. McAuliffe, and right now it's empty. Now, I'm going to talk about what actually happens when we create a project in just a second. What we're going to also need is we're going to need another folder that's actually going to be created by Media Composer first once we start consolidating and transcoding media. And that folder is going to be called Avid Media Files. But don't worry, we're going to get to that in an upcoming lesson. So this is pretty much all the housekeeping that we need to talk of outside of the application itself. Now, keep in mind, you're going to want to keep yourself as organized as possible, whether you're going to be importing still images or movies that you've rendered out in Adobe's After Effects, things like that. You're going to want to create a folder hierarchy for all that so that you can find all of this content as quickly as possible. But let's actually get into Media Composer first and let's create our first project. Okay, so let's command and tab into Media Composer first, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And this is the project browser, the project window that you're going to be greeted with when you launch Media Composer first. Now you'll notice that we have a splash screen rotating through here that's going to give you information that you might want to take into consideration of viewing, such as things like watching tutorials, you can see that you can get the quick start guide, you can get avid community support and even learn from the pros. Now, to be honest, you really don't need to watch any other tutorials other than the ones that you're watching right now because we're going to give you all the information that you need to know right here. Okay. So let's create our first project and we're just going to call this first project appropriately enough our first project. Okay. Now the next thing that Media Composer first wants to know is where are you going to put this project and we're going to open a project location. It's going to be inside of our Media Composer first projects right here and you'll see that it created a folder called Kevin P. McAuliffe. Now it created this folder because that is who is logged into this, that's who's logged into this computer. That's me, Kevin P. McAuliffe. So if you had someone else log into this computer, they would come in to create their projects. It would create a subfolder called their name and their projects would go in there. But again, we're fine with this subfolder and I'm just going to create the project. Now, if you've seen Media Composer before, you'll know that there's also all these bells and whistles that come along with creating a new project. But in Media Composer first, we don't have that. All we're doing is creating the project information. I'm simply going to say create and Media Composer first is going to open and it's going to create two bins for me to work with. Now, before we really get into things, I'm just going to close both of these bins and let's talk about what we're actually seeing here because I think that's important. On the left, we have the project window. This is where all of our bin information is going to be kept for us to have quick access to, to get access to clips, sequences, audio, graphics, and other things like that. On the top, sort of top right side of the screen, we have the composer window. The composer window is where we're going to do just that. We're going to compose our edits. The left side of the composer window represents the preview window. This is where you will call up clips to look at, mark in and out points of clips that you're going to want to put into your timeline. Now, then on the right hand side, we have the sequence window. This sequence window works directly with the timeline window that's located below. Whatever you see in the sequence window is directly reflective of what you're dragging through inside of the timeline window. Now we are able to get in and get different views, but don't worry about that. Again, like I said, we're going to cover all of that in an upcoming lesson. Now, a couple things that I do want to mention before we wrap up our first lesson. Now, I did mention that we had a couple bins open when Media Composer first 
first opened our project. Now these bins are where we're going to be keeping, whether they're clips, whether they, now they could be video clips, they could be graphic clips, whether they're audio clips, voiceover clips, music, sound effects, even sequences. We're gonna be able to keep all of that stuff inside of these bins. Now, one thing I wanna point out, you'll notice at the top of the project window, we have a button called appropriately enough new bin. Now, there is a limit to how many bins you can have inside of Media Composer first. Now, the bin limit is five. You'll notice that if I try to go more than five bins, I'm told it only supports five bins and I can upgrade to the full version of Media Composer if I want to. But what I wanna point out is that many people think that, oh, only five bins, that's no good. Keep in mind that when you're working, in my own personal opinion, when you're getting started, there's really only four bins that you need to create to get yourself rolling. A sequences bin, a clips bin, a graphics bin, and an audio bin. If you start out with those four bins, you're in good shape and you can't go wrong. Now, let's talk about the options that we have at the top of the project window. We have the bins view, which is where we see, obviously, all of our bins. We have our settings that I'm gonna talk about in our next lesson, so keep that in the back of your head. We then have the effects tab, and we're gonna talk about effects in their own dedicated lesson, but you'll see you have an absolute ton of effects in here that you're gonna be able to work with, and you have the ability to add more effects into Media Composer first, but again, I'll talk about that in an upcoming lesson. Next, we have the format tab. Now, the format tab right now is grayed out, and it's set to a standard definition format. We're gonna talk about the format tab when we get in and create our first sequence. Now, the next two options, usage and info, really you're not gonna be going to this very often. It's just helpful for you to have this information just to make sure that you have installed what you need to have installed in case you ever needed support when working inside of Media Composer first. Okay, so I think that's a good place to wrap up our first lesson. In our next lesson, I wanna get in and talk about settings because they're important to set before you get editing, so this way you don't run into any problems down the road. Now, as I wrap up this lesson, I wanna take a moment to thank our sponsors, starting out with Video Guys. They are my preferred reseller for both video hardware and software, and when you're ready to make the next step to the full version of Media Composer, Video Guys will be there to help you make your upgrade as smooth as possible. You can check them out at videoguys.com, and you can use the coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Video Guys purchase. I also wanna thank Boris FX and the Boris FX family of visual effects software, including Generate Sapphire and Imagineer Systems Mocha. Don't forget, you can work with all their effects inside of Media Composer first by making your purchase through the Avid Marketplace, and you can check them out at borisfx.com. And finally, I wanna thank Rampant Design Tools, the leaders in QuickTime-based style elements that work perfectly inside of Media Composer first. You can check out their entire product line at rampantdesigntools.com and even download over 40 free 4K effects at 4kfree.com. And finally, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.